Good evening, everybody. My name is Mayang Chang, and on behalf of Audi India, I would like to welcome you to the fourth session of the Visionarium 2020. Please take screenshots, please take pictures, post about the session, tell us what you feel, and don't forget to tag Audi India using the hashtag Audi Visionarium. Well, if we are all ready, if all of this has been done, then let me tell you what has gone before. We've had some mind-blowing conversations already at Visionarium 2020. On day one, we had the captain of the Indian cricket team, Virat Kohli, and he gave us some great insights on leadership and fitness. On day two, we had Chef Sanjeev Kapoor telling us about the importance of crafting a future where local cuisines and ingredients will be valued. And then yesterday, we had musical maestro Shankar Mahadevanji thrill us with an amazing musical performance while also speaking about the future of music both in India and around the world. The Visionarium so far has been a journey of revelations about various facets of our life. Today, we turn that curious gaze inwards towards creative expression. In our daily lives, the seat of creativity that is our right brain, it usually is forced to take a back seat. Well, given our professional pursuits, which leave little time for creative ones, but I wonder, could expressing this side of ourselves make our lives and futures better? What happens when the power of the right brain is unleashed? Its true gift, I believe, is the arts. The expression of intangible ideas that makes our world so much richer paintings, sculptures, theatre, and of course, the many forms of the written word. All of them help, re help reveal truths about the world and ourselves that are otherwise hard to see because they are behind the mist of all our professional ambitions. Few writers have expressed truths more universal as well as William Shakespeare. He once wrote, all the world's a stage and all men and women merely players. They have their exits and entrances, and one man in his time plays many parts. Well, I wonder if dear old Will was thinking about our next guest when he wrote this, because there are very few people who've played as many roles in their lives, both in their real and real life. Our guest, from waiting tables at the Taj Palace to being the official photographer of the Norwegian boxing team, from acting in ads to playing unforgettable, award-winning characters in many, many movies. He is a man of many talents, a shining testament to the power of the right brain. Joining us today to talk about aesthetic expression is the man who always has a positive outlook towards life, the inimitable Bhavan Nirani. Welcome, sir. Welcome, welcome, welcome. <laughs> Thank you so much, Django. Thank you so much. I mean, you know, uh, only only my good old friend Will could have said it better than you. Thank you so much. Uh, <laughs> it, it's so wonderful to have you. And, and, and I, <laughs> it's so good to see you, Chang. You're such a wonderful young man. And it just made my heart feel proud to hear those things that you said. But honestly, I, I am ashamed. I'm, I'm not ashamed. I'm shy of praise. But at the same time, even though when we say nice things about someone, we are shy, but we also like to listen to them with one mm -hmm. ear, you know. It, it's <laughs> yes, so of course. I mean, who, who doesn't Come like on, to be, Let's get this you know, conversation rolling. I can't things. wait. I can't wait. Yes, sir. Actually, before the conversation, one thing that I didn't know before this was that uh, you, I knew that you were a photographer, but I didn't know that it was uh, for you were the official photographer of the Norwegian boxing team. How did that happen? And no, the <laughs> what happened now? Official there? photographer of the World Cup of boxing, actually. Uh, it was, you know, oh, it was wow. the official photographer of the World Cup of Boxing. I was, I was, yeah, and the, my previous job before that was taking photographs of uh, sc school sports day, school cricket matches, school uh, cycle mm -hmm. races. And I said, you know, I got to up the game. Everything about uh, us in our lives, Chang, is about upping the game and looking, taking a little peek into the future. Because how long are you going to do the same thing over and over again? So one mm -hmm. fine day I decided, you know, uh, let me go for the big kahuna. Let me go for the big event. And I went and applied uh, to be the official photographer of the World Cup of Boxing. I got rejected. Wow. Uh, yeah, I got rejected, but uh, simply because I had a great variety of photographs about many things. Cricket and athletics and motorsport and on, on an on a 
amateur level, but I didn't have a single shot on boxing. And he said, no, I want to see, you could be a great sports photographer, you have great sports time, but you have no idea of boxing. So I went and I took pictures and took many, many pictures of some very terrible boxing. Uh, and, 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 and somehow I decided that even though that the, the, the lighting isn't good, the location isn't good, the boxers were amateur boxers, but I made, I had to make it look professional. I think you've got to push yourself on any given day with whatever you have in your hand, not turn on and say, Oh, how am I going to make this work? This is it. This is what you have. Make it work. Mm -hmm. And I squeezed whatever I could. I presented those pictures and I got the job. Well, given uh, what you would like to photograph before that, and even what you presented to uh, the person who was going to employ you later, I, I've, I believe that you always had an eye for the moving image, right? Uh, things in motion, kinetic energy. And uh, that's what probably had you already in the right space for this thing. Yeah, but this is a professional world, right? You need to see your work. And if you turn around and say, but where am I going to get international looking photographs? Well, mm -hmm. Make the best with what you have. No, I, I, I'm a believer that you shouldn't grumble with your lot. Because the moment you start grumbling with okay. your lot, uh, you're in trouble. If you grumble, I can't make any progress because when I'm in the lockdown and I start grumbling, you will not make any progress mm -hmm. in the lockdown. If you turn on and say, I'm going to make this lockdown work for me to my advantage, there's something going to be great that comes out of it. For starters, this visionarium sounds very good. Uh, and, and I'm very <laughs> glad to be here. Thank you very much for having me. No, so happy to have you here, Bhavan. Uh, speaking of grumbling, there is this, uh, I just want to have your opinion on this. There's this grumbling, there's this, you know, these alarm bells that have been ringing for a long time. And I wanted to know, what do you think about this popular notion? They say that no one has the time to read anymore. Newspapers are shutting down, uh, coffee shops are turning into, uh, the bookshops are turning into coffee shops to stay relevant. Uh, in, and this has been happening since a long time. People keep saying, oh, people don't read anymore. What do you think about this? I I tend to agree, but I more than anything, the ever the optimist that I am, I tend to disagree also, Chai. And I'll tell you why. Mm -hmm. Because uh, we are surrounded by, you know, bombarded, bombarded with instant information and instant gratification, all of that. But I disagree. People read. Okay. And people say nobody reads poetry. And like, for example, today when I was told, you know, and we had this meeting a few days ago, Chang, we'll talk about poetry. And for a minute, yep. I turned around and said, poetry, who to sit and listen to about poetry? And Chang, and I, and I kind of argued for all of two minutes. And then I said to myself, yeah. no, it's a wrong notion to believe and to assume that people do not like poetry, do not like to read. Because people do. And I'll tell you something about poetry. I know, and there are people who are listening in, and I can't see you, unfortunately, but I can promise you that at some point in your life, you've written a poem, or you've expressed your thoughts in lines, in words mm -hmm. that you would not necessarily be able to say or speak. You have, whether it's to your girlfriend or to your love, or, an, or in a form of an apology, or daddies who are sitting out there, uh, you know, who've read, uh, written a poem to their daughter, on the day of their marriage. People write poetry, believe it or not, people write poetry. And I'll tell you, there are a lot of people smiling when I'm saying this, you know, but mm -hmm. a lot of people are closet bathroom poets. People love to write, ah. people love to, yeah, because I'll tell you this, and, I, and I'll round this story up a, li a little later on. Uh, people find the expression in not just writing a, di some people may write a diary, some people may write letters, but believe me, uh, people write poetry too. And people read a lot of poetry. It takes you back to school mm -hmm. in many ways. The happy days that you had in school. Uh, my, uh, uh, is it okay if I, uh, if I ramble along? Is it okay if I Absolutely. just ramble along without you? Or you've got another question coming up because I got lots to tell you, uh, you know. Uh, is that okay? <laughs> we would love to my, hear, I would love lockdown, to hear you was, speak, sir. It, it, you know, it's very strange that what I'm saying that during this lockdown, my mother, she's 94 years old, Chang. She's 94, mm -hmm. all right? And I would go, I'd go and have chai with mom morning and evening and, and now a little longer because I'm, I'm grateful to the lockdown in many ways because it's made me spend more time with my mother who's 94. And every day she'd make me do one of two things. One, 
uh, read a story about a great man, a philanthropist, and his journey. Number one, or number two, read oh, wow. me a poem. Yeah, and I would be. Re I have been reading poems right through the lockdown to my mother, and it's so strange. My mother, she's ninety-four, but ever since she's been, as long as I remember, she would say this. You know, I've noticed uh, uh, my memory is failing me. All right, I said, "Don't talk rubbish, mom. Your memory is not failing you." Uh, and I start a poem. Okay, for example, Lord Allen's door, the chieftain to the Highlands, bar, and she'll take off. So as boatmen do not carry, you know, I'll oh, wow. give you a silver pound to row you all the way. And I said, "Where's your memory?" So she says, "Yeah, it's there. It's there. Don't worry." And it goes on. Yeah, it's on, there when it matters, and, goes, and for the things that she loves. Yeah. Nothing. She just likes to say, "My memory is bad." And she's only shamming. She <laughs> knows exactly what a sharp. She's she's sharper than you and me put together, Chang. I'm telling you, she never misses a beat. And I've recorded all her stuff. Okay, you know, I get tears in my eyes, but I record all the stuff. And it's beautiful that I sit and I can read poems to my mother. Now, if we could just do that, uh, for for people, it's such a beautiful thing. So when we talk about poetry. Everybody uh, listening in must be saying, "Ah, yar, yeah, intellectual baat karne ja raha." No, I think I'm talking about humanity mm. at the same time. I'm talking about motherhood. I'm talking about sonhood. If you know what I'm saying, ask your next question as well. Just I, you start me off on my mother. I won't shut up. Uh, I, I got so moved by that because uh, I also feel that uh, your mom is a very very smart woman because she's like you know how do I get uh, Bhaman to spend more time with me? Okay, lockdown is there. Now how do we make that time more productive? How we how do we strengthen that bond? And probably that's where that excuse came from. That oh my god, my memory is failing me. I think why don't you read something to me? And she's that's, a sham. That's she's such a beautiful say, moment. No. <laughs> mom, only one thing what happened just three days ago after the meeting we had. You know we talked. So I was, and I took, told everybody uh, at Audi that I am going to be taking my list of poems for my mother. All right. So I went mm -hmm. to her and just before you, this is the, this story will freak you out, Chang. It is okay. the most serendipitous, uh, coincidental. Coincidence is a bad word. It's serendipitous. This story. All right. So I'm entering my mom's room, and I teach. I teach screenwriting. I've got about 300 okay. students now. and one of my students is an 80 year old lady she's an 80 year old lady and wow. yeah it you know i'm choking up as i'm telling you this story i may not mention her name because not that she said you can't use my name but her identity so she sent a message on the group again it was a message of praise uh, but so i won't say too much but she just sent the opening line of a poem on a group on a whatsapp group where people are all the time putting the wrong stupid forwards and you know what have you and this lady sends me the opening line of a poem abu ben adam may your tribe increase wow and i entered my mom's room and i said look at this you know mom i've got this show and i'm so excited and i want to do this little chat with my friend chang and for um, uh, audi and She said, "Oh, poems. So, what poems? Can I recommend a poem for you?" Now, hear this. This is the freaky part. I said, "I've come for the recommendation, mom." And she says, <laughs> "How about the Night of the Scorpion by Nisim Ezekiel?" All right. Okay. Now, before I enter the room, the lady who sent me the message. Abu Ben Adam, you'll have to follow a little, okay? Abu Ben Adam, her name <laughs> sounds like a relative of Nisim Ezekiel. Oh, 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 oh. call, message that lady, and tell her, are you related to Nisim Ezekiel? No way, no way. Yeah. You're and kidding me. I'm saying me. to myself, this is the freakiest thing I've ever heard. I am talking about a lady who sent me a message about poetry. Coincidence number one. I enter the room to ask my mom which poem to read out. Abu Ben Adam turns out to be my mom's one of my mom's favorite poem. However, she recommends、oh. a poem. 
called Light of the Scorpion, written by Nisim Ezekiel. And Nisim Ezekiel and this lady who sent me the message sound like relatives. And I asked her, are you relatives? No, but so and so, we are from the same town. The person you're talking about, we are from the same town. Saying, yo, I love that poem by Nisim Ezekiel. Uh, what is going <laughs> on? I say to myself, this is the power. This is the power of, of poetry. I think that the God, the po gods of poetry were getting us all together. My 94 year old mom, this 80 year old beautiful lady who was a student of mine in my writing class and you Chang and all these people who are listening in, I'm sure. And I just hope that people I have explained the story well, so people get are touched by it, you know, uh, which is so beautiful. Now, this must be reminding everybody of uh, probably uh, similar situations that must have happened with them where a written word or something that has been recited has really connected them in such a way. Uh, we would love to hear this uh, poem that you've been reading to your mother. Yeah, it would be, sorry, be great I, if you could have no escape. You have no escape. My mother has recommended <laughs> it. Uh, my friend from class, my 80 year old friend has recommended, recommended it and, and we've got to read it. So why don't you put it on the screen? Chango and I'll just read the poem. Yes, sir. And guess what the poem is there about? Is. Nobody, uh, just don't read ahead of me, okay? Uh, can you hear me clearly? Is my voice coming out nice and clear? Yes, it is. Uh, Chang, can you hear my voice nice? I can, sir. All right. The Night of the Scorpion. I remember the night my mother was stung by a scorpion. Ten hours of steady rain had driven him to crawl beneath a sack of rice. Parting with the poison, flash of diabolic tail in the dark room. He risked the rain again. The peasants came like swarms of flies and buzzed the name of God a hundred times to paralyze the evil one. With candles and with lanterns, throwing giant scorpion shadows on the mud-baked walls, they searched for him. He was not found. They clicked their tongues. With every movement that the scorpion made, his poison moved in my mother's blood, they said. May he sit still, they said. May the sins of your previous birth be burned away tonight, they said. May your suffering decrease the misfortunes of your next birth, they said. May the sum of all evil balanced in this unreal world against the sum of good, become diminished by your pain. May the poison purify your flesh of desire and your spirit of ambition, they said. And they sat around on the floor with my mother in the center, the peace of understanding on each face, more candles, more lanterns, more neighbors, more insects and endless rain. My mother twisted through and through, groaning on a mat. My father, skeptic, rationalist, trying every curse and blessing, powder, mixture, and herb and hybrid. He even poured a little paraffin upon the bitten toe and put a match to it. I watched the flame feeding on my mother I watched the holy man perform his rites to tame the poison with an incantation. After 20 hours, it lost its sting. My mother only said, thank God the scorpion picked on me and spared my children. Wow. Wow, now, that was so beautiful. Now, the point is, it's so beautiful. And you all think about it's about rites and rituals and God. It, eventually, this poem turned out to be a poem about motherhood. They were talking about sins and whatnot. What sins? You're a mother who cares about children. What sins could you carry from your last life? It's so beautiful. And when I walked in the room and Zenobia was there, my wife, and she said, yeah, yeah, Nisim Ezekiel, uh, Nisim Ezekiel, yes, yes, yes. You know what? I'm going to tell you something even more freaky now. Hold on to your okay. horses, man. We lived in Nisim Ezekiel's building. <laughs> oh, no, God. Okay. This is uh, no coincidence. It's serendipity. <laughs> yeah, I grew up in front of Nisim Ezekiel. 
Zenobia and the boys used to meet him every morning at the bus stop. Right outside his house was the oh. bus stop when they, when they dropped them to the school. And she said, yeah, Nisim, I just love that poem, Night of the Scorpion. It was, my, it was in my 10th standard poetry book. So I'm reading in my 10th standard, Nisim Izikil's Night of the Scorpion. And my neighbor is Nisim Izikil. I mean, how beautiful is that? Is that? How privileged can one be? And that is maybe the power that I was blessed with to have a mother who loved poems and have Nisim Izikil next door to probably share it with us. I think, I, I, I don't know what to say. I, I really don't know what to well, say. Well, it came one, one long circle. It's like coming back to where it was. You met him when you were a child and then now, many, many years later, the recommendation that the 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 uh, khwahij that has come from your mom is for a poem by him. The recommendation that has come that it has been by him. It's quite and at the a same circle. moment when a lady who sounds like Nisim Ezekiel's relative, uh, you know, yeah, does you know comes into my life and says something, talks about a poem, no less, another poem, another favorite of my mom's. Let's go on. Let's go on. Okay. <laughs> Shall we read the second poem, uh, Chang? Yes, sir. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. I think, you know, okay. so another one ha, ha, right no, away. I, I have so to read three because all three have been recommended by my mother. So, you know, whether you like it or not. Sorry, guys. This is my, my a poem that eventually chokes me up in the last two lines. There has not been a time that I have read this poem. Don't read it, guys. We'll read it together. Uh, that this poem has not choked me up in the end. It's, a, it's an inspirational poem. I read, read it to my kids ever since they were little. I read it to myself every now mm -hmm. and then. It became an automatic choice for tonight. Uh, and let's hear it. If by Rudyard Kipling. If you can keep your head when all about you are losing theirs and blaming it on you. If you can trust yourself when all men doubt you, but make allowance for their doubting too. If you can wait and not be tired of by waiting or being lied about, don't deal in lies or being hated, don't give way to hating and yet don't look too good nor talk too wise. If you can dream, and not make dreams your master. If you can think and not make thoughts your aim. If you can meet with triumph and disaster and treat those two imposters just the same. If you can bear to hear the truth you've spoken, twisted by knaves to make a trap for fools. And or watch the things you gave life to broken and stoop to build them up with worn out tools. If you can make one heap of all your winnings and risk it on one turn of pitch and toss and lose and start again at your beginnings and never breathe a word about your loss. If you can force your heart and nerve and sinew to serve your turn long after they are gone and so hold on when there is nothing in you except the will to which to them hold on. If you can talk with crowds and keep your virtue, or walk with kings nor lose the common touch, if neither foes nor loving friends can hurt you, if all men count on you but none too much, if you can fill the unforgiving minute with 60 seconds worth of distance run. Yours is the earth and everything that's in it. And which is more, you'll be a man, my son. Wow. Brilliant, brilliant, lovely? brilliant. It is Those lovely. last two lines. But it's also ironic up. that, uh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's uh, in a way, ironic, it's like eh? just telling you that just existing. The, the ironic bit is that uh, uh, Rudyard Kipling, Kipling was also the one who said that uh, poetry is not common enough. 
what you were talking about that don't intellectualize it everybody is a closet poet somewhere or the other but apparently this is what he said right. as well at the same time after writing something so beautiful think about it and it's so yeah. simple right but uh, before so simple it is if you can it make is. the triumph it's and the disaster and treat those two imposters just the same it just blows my mind you know those lines triumph and disaster imposters eventually what you're looking for is truth you know that's what you know rishi kapoor my dear friend passed away this year and everybody tells me you know asks me how do you deal with with your with your with your success how do you deal with the flops it's difficult you know mm -hmm. you deal with flops you work very yeah. hard and yeah and he said something very simple i think it's so poetic in it you know he says never take let the hits go to your head and never let your flops go to your heart simple you know uh, and 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 that's it you just work on you just move on regardless and that's what kipling is saying you know the whole poem is about balance it's only saying in the 60 seconds uh, if you can fill the unforgiving minute of 60 seconds of distance run that's all you got to do spend time well and that's what i think is important during this lockdown let's use our time well am i preaching too much live a life what? worth living bilkul nahi bilkul nahi <laughs> this is in a way it's the interpretation of the poem as well uh, it is actually it is. one of my favorites man and uh, it very directly it could be it could be anyone telling anybody this thing it could be a father reading to his son it could be a mother reading to a daughter a friend to a friend a uh, well wisher yeah. to another person and it just right. uh, says that uh, life has to be worth living you have to fill it with as you said those 60 seconds of worthiness it has to be right. that uh before we move on to the third poem i i actually don't like it that you're re uh, reciting only three i wish you could recite as many as you wanted uh but that was what would we we would have the time for i wanted to ask you these three poems have been recommended by your mom but when you have right. to read for yourself like when there is no right. real pressure that you have to go and uh read it at a at a platform like this if you just, just have to read just for yourself just by the way there's no real pressure now also you know gotcha. you know, yeah what's the pressure you know people are listening and if they're listening well what's the pressure poetry is never about pressure right so anyway i interrupted you go on brother now what, what do you uh, what do you like to read by or by yourself is there any particular style or genre that you like yeah you can read a sonnet by my good friend will as you said uh mm -hmm. i i, I can course. read something that's a little modern uh, uh i can read read i can read a lot of lot of things uh uh but but you know i somehow always start with uh with if for some reason and then of course i've got to practice because i've got to uh uh read that's the pressure when you read my mom because she'll catch you out if you made a make a single mistake you know <laughs> memory <laughs> my mother yeah, yeah, yeah and she can just take off huh she can just take off um but i want to say something i want to say something about uh i'm coming back to my mother and try to round this conversation before we read the uh, the, the third and last poem mm -hmm. and i want to ask you that my mom always accuses herself of saying my memory is not good my memory is got good and she goes on and on and her memory is outstanding and why is it then chai that she remembers poems that she has heard 85 years ago and she knows it word by word do you know why I I was thinking about it before. Have no idea. I'll tell. Let me let me take a stab at it. All right. Let me take a stab at it. Okay. I think we remember days of innocence and days of beauty. We also selectively might remember days of pain. And you see, I never forget. I never forget. And we try to forget. But the most vivid memories come. from your days of innocence from the days of things that made you happy and you may ask mummy what may have happened 15 days ago and she may not remember as well but the stuff that made her happy as a child she'll never forget so this is the power of poetry 
I'm not, I hope I'm not, it sound rather very intellectual. I'm putting it down in a very humanized way. A simple shopkeeper. My mother was a shopkeeper. She ran a shop okay. for 50 years. She sat at a shop every day after my father died. And she used to sweat down with beads of sweat running down her neck. Her hair would be wet because they would, she would sit next to a, a bhatti, a, a stove and fry, wafers were being fried, potato chips. She's a shopkeeper, mm -hmm. but poetry enriched her life. And, and the memory of youth and her childhood stayed with her to serve her today in a day where we turn around and say a 94 year old woman, rem woman remembers all this is because you hang on to happiness, joy and innocence. Well, that's my take on it, Chang. Yeah, that is, uh, it's a good stab at it, actually. I, I do believe that uh, that would be the thing. But it would be very interesting if you would ask her, once we're done with this session, if you would ask her why she thinks she remembers those. And it would be really nice to know that answer because I have this situation with my grandmother as well. Uh, uh -huh. She usually cannot remember what's happened on the given day. But she remembers things from when I was a kid, when my mother was little and very detailed, detailed explanations about our childhood, about our growing up years. And even when I ask her questions about how did we land up in India, you know, because our lineage comes from China and uh, how did we come to be here? Why did we come here? She has some very, very, it's a very strong memory out there. So I can relate, but I would definitely, I uh, probably you should go and ask your mother this and I should go and ask Nani this, that how do you remember yeah. all those things, but not this, perhaps that would be. But uh, Maman, you were also talking about, you were talking about uh, teaching and uh, you know, you have these screenwriting classes and uh, apart, uh, there's, there are so many aspects of it. And one aspect that is uh, associated, at least in the public perception, very commonly with you is the comedy that you do and uh, various forms of comedy that you've done. When you're teaching everybody about screenwriting, what kind of conversation do you have with them when you talk about it? Do you, do you tell them that comedy is tougher, it's easy, or is it just like anything else as long as you put your heart to it? Ah. Uh. Well, you've asked a complicated question, but I think it's it's as simple as this. I, I would hate to compartmentalize anything. You can't mm -hmm. eventually a story is about somebody, somebody's emotions, somebody's feelings and someone's journey. You can't compartment and compartmentalize it. Uh, you okay. don't you don't follow a film for its twist and plot. You follow a film for a character's journey. If the journey is not worth mm -hmm. telling, which means that the, the journey, there's no want in the journey. I don't, the character doesn't want anything. Then the story is not worth telling, right? So what I teach is, uh, you, you don't write a story. You tell the character, you, 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 you create a character, you ask the character to write the journey for you. Uh, because otherwise we are okay. all the time trying to plot and tell the character where to go. And we play God as writers. We aren't. The character is the author of his own journey. And, and, and that is the first basic thing. So when you talk about comedy, I, I learned as an actor, though, and I, and I applied mm -hmm. as a screenwriter also, that no person is funny for 24 hours a day. No person is sad 24 hours a day. If you're serious, you will afford a smile at some point in the day. No person is... is is evil 24 hours a day. You will see a spot of goodness, whether it's with a little dog on the street yeah. or, or someone or with a staff member. You can say, what a bad man, but there will be a moment of kindness somewhere. And you've got to aim for that. No man is good 24 hours a day. Oh, bahut achha admi hai, bahut achha admi hai. Nain, 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 nain. Kabhi, kabhi wo, wo Aza, hoi nahi sakta. Sabhi karta, you know. Dusre loko, matlab, you know, he might even... Uh, be a little nasty, you know. So we have to aim for that in character. So when I do a character, there, there has to be a, a blend of all these things. Otherwise, it's very one dimensional. So when you say comedy versus drama, I don't know how to answer that. I try to go for the character. He could be a little funny on a given moment. He could be a little weak on a given moment. He could be emotional too. 
you can't be one you can't be a one mm-hmm. one note banjo one string banjo all your life ding 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 it's very boring <laughs> so that's how i answer the question it's going to be boring and annoying no that's a very good answer yeah. baman act thank you so much because as as uh, as an actor who's trying to do more uh it's a very good answer for me as well because as you said don't compartmentalize because everything just requires that kind of approach to the character and that's great advice for everybody out there who appreciates stories who appreciates the storytelling the art of it and who wants to become a writer an actor by the way when we speak about that uh, a lot of things have changed in the way people write we still have the long form we still have everything else i started reading at a very uh, late age baman i must have probably acquired taste for it only when i was about 16 and that too because our principal in my boarding school uh, he realized that we weren't reading enough so he created uh-huh. this thing that every week you would read one book and you would submit a book report and uh, right. most of us cribbed about it initially but when we got into it we <laughs> enjoyed it so much i have not stopped reading in fact right. uh, i have a lot of books under the laptop right now to stack it up and i have been reading all of them very very patiently and enjoying it as well uh but what has also happened in all this time even though the written word has metamorphosized it has evolved to keep itself relevant and fun uh, whether it is just as Uh, you read uh, you reading it or you're reciting it or you're seeing it as as an audio visual medium as well in today's time right. ek baat to hai ki definitely the attention span has gone down a lot how do you deal with that right. how do the writers today deal with that when there are not just books not just outdoor activities there are multiple stimuli bombarding us all the time fighting for attention saying mujhe dekho mujhe padho mujhe karo how does a writer counter that It, it, now you've asked a complex question. You're going to get an extremely complex answer. But I'll tell you something very straight. Uh, I I think that you know what we are we are consuming in between is of a very short short uh, short span. So when we are getting to work, when we are mm-hmm. in the car, when we are waiting for. But let me tell you. On the other hand, if you're a movie go, if you're a cinema kind of watcher, the OTT platform, people are binging. they're watching yep. eight hours of of one one uh, series in one go what happened to their their short short memory then i mean short attention span yeah they're doing yeah now so that's a silly argument we are only using this for time pass when we want to consume we don't mind sitting for eight hours at a stretch to watch the queen yeah Ooh, so yeah. that debunks that whole theory all right number 1 Number two, how do you stick around for eight hours? By good writing. You're watching. You're watching uh, an episode uh, on your screen. How do you keep the uh, the person engaged? Because of the written word. So you're saying that people aren't writing and reading. There are people who are writing. There are people who are they reading. Are, reading yes. And then they are converting it into the audiovisual. Uh, writing have to be as a very very. Because in eight hours you don't don't have songs. Don't have much color. Have you hard to keep you in what they are wearing? You don't, but you can simply because there is a that is involved in the storytelling. Any any William Shakespeare, how are you in the story? Why the whole thing and why they? Because there there is absolute craft in the form of acts of where they keep changing the beats. Technique. I ask you to have. I give you wood. Can you put four legs and say I will? You have to know how to make legs of equal distance. That's how you put the mm-hmm. story up. up. Prop up your story. There is craft. So that's how people. I have no the uh, the whole thing of saying people have short. They watch short short videos. That's all rubbish. that's time pass that's in betweens because people want to be occupied all the time you know so there there's your answer if at all it answered it yeah there it is <laughs> well do you also think that uh, the end result of all of this the, the 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 content that we consume the art that we consume right. that can also change us as people that can inspire us or just make us better people yeah 
I'll tell you, I was watching a movie the other day. It was called, uh, please, uh, whoever was listening, just watch it. Find, the, find it and watch it. It's a movie called The Judgment at Nuremberg. It's a three-hour film. You won't lift your eyes off the screen. And you'll hang on to every word. Why? Because you get an audience to listen to something that actually evokes your own conscience. If you don't manage to do that, then you've lost the audience. You cannot tell a story. This happened, mm -hmm. then that happened, then that happened, then that happened. Those are events. Those are a sequence of events. But if you can make the audience feel, oh, what if I am in that situation? Uh, let me see. And and you must watch watch uh, uh, great movies and read great books and and read poems to your children and your mothers. <laughs> Absolutely. That's, that's, that's such great advice right there. And I'm hoping that it will shape uh, a lot of opinions out there and it will change. Uh, Bhavan, there's one thing before you read uh, you, uh, the next poem. Uh, everybody has a certain quirk, right? Some people like to sit with their coffee. They like to sit with the wine. They probably put their feet up while doing whatever they like. What do you do when you are you know, reading something or writing something or enacting something. What is your personal quirk? I must be looking if, you, if I don't observe myself. I don't observe myself, but I must be looking like a mm -hmm. complete nut because I get very, there's a certain excitement. I get very excited. You know, I want everything in place. Uh, I want everything nice and uh, nobody should walk in at the right. Or do you want a cup of cup? No, no, just now. Uh, now, now, this is my time or my time or my time uh and, and i'm very when the when the say a movie starts and the credit titles come on i behave like a little child when the mgm lion comes Rah! oh I'm, I'm most excited <laughs> when, when, when the when the music starts in the beginning you know for for a logo even the logo of the film i am excited and i'm smiling and i must be if you put a camera on me i must be looking like a pakka idiot but i don't care because that's exactly how i watched movies when i was a kid and I watch them with great innocence. I watch with great innocence now, even though I know how to analyze and break a movie down. But I still would love to watch it with innocence. And that's why I remember those movies, because I watch them with great innocence. Mm. But my quirk, I don't know. I, I, one thing, I, I like a lot of popcorn, though, I have to admit. <laughs> popcorn chal rahi hai, hai. And uh, please do not disturb. This is my time. <laughs> <laughs> Well, but uh, that's what we've done as well. Uh, what uh, I've asked about what I've done at my place and what I've asked the back end team to do that please lock the doors because we have Baman reading more and more poetry and uh, we have uh, the third one. Although I wish you would read four, five, six, but the third one, uh, who is it uh, by Baman? There is, there is, I'll tell you later. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, there is another, another little thing I teach. Uh, there is a rule even by telling a joke, you know. Mm -hmm. When you tell a joke, it's in three acts. The setup, the conflict, okay. and the punchline. A movie is in three acts, right? It's the setup, the conflict, and redemption. Uh, yes. uh, a joke always has three three points to it, you know, th three mistaken identities. And I think three poems is perfect. The fourth one would be one a bridge too far. So I'm going to read a poem, <laughs> which is <laughs> which is a poem about movies. It's a poem about uh, movies. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's a poem about uh, moviegoers, writers, audiences, producers, critics, all rolled into one. All right. And uh, um, it's the angst. It's the it's about stars. It's about uh, the city of what we were talking about a little. Uh, and I, I don't want to be accused of being called closet poet. So I'm bravely coming after Nisim Izikil and Rudyard Kipling. And I'm reading a poem that I wrote just so that we say, if you feel, uh, right. feel like writing, if you feel like reading it, you know, people are shy of reading their work because, oh, it's very personal and all. No, no, no. If you had an audience, you'd love to share it. Don't lie. You'd love to share a poem if you had an audience mm -hmm. that understood. Kya poetry sunayega, gana sunade yaar. 
you know, no, you, you must read out a poem. So that's why just to put my money where my mouth is, I'm going to read out a poem about my world, my, my people, my, my, the cinema audiences and what have you. You want to hear it? Yes, sir, please. Let's put it on the screen. Ah, I don't know why now I'm nervous. It's called the cinema hall. <laughs> <laughs> a dark, dark room filled with light projected through a gape in wall. A gape an audience sits within the close-knit temple of a cinema hall. Hearts will jive to united beat like dancing dust in projector's light. Light that's laden with gifts and pearls skims o'er heads carrying sound and sight. Months ago, a germ was graced in a naive head of hope was found, a thought, a theme, a trist, a tale, a cool draft spiraled and it was bound. His book now shaped like a beggar's bowl. His mind works less, his legs work more. Hurrah, the written paper's worth, the papered funds to start the show. <laughs> Names and order of price and fame appear and fade with time on screen. Some new, some old, some merely spelt, some as hopeful as the sad has been. Each tale unfurled, each word unmasked of brother, sister, friend or foe. The tale is told, the song is sung of mirth or might, of love or woe. And in the dark, the faces glow. Grateful, joyous lovers sit, save one who's grim. And in the no, also he thinks this analyst. He once had sat with boyish glee. Like the boy on left, he left behind. His brow all curled, his joy upturned. He lurks alone with pen in hand. The glowing faces shuffle out with money's worth and wanting more. The analyst in twisted pain, a look that says, what do they know? Makers, movers, moguls wait. In the witness box, they all must stand. The scribe thinks he is judging them, but the glowing face is the gavel hand. Names and price and order change. Youth and time will judge us all. The dark, dark room remains the same. The close-knit court of the cinema hall. Woo! Wow! I was going to ask you what or who your muse is, but now I already have the answer. It has come <laughs> through in this poem of yours, Baman. The muse is cinema. Yeah. I, what, I, what I just feel like... You to write this book? Uh, when I started, when, when I write, there is great pain in writing because you don't know where you're going. There's so much to learn. There's so much to tell. You... you, you and, and and the pain is can only be turned into joy when, when fortunately or unfortunately there will be time and youth that will judge you you know but eventually mm -hmm. i think it's important that you should be a judge of your own work and what makes you happy hits and flops will come and go as rishi kapoor said you carry on regardless because if you have not enjoyed the process the movie can make millions of crores it's got a no value to your life uh, but if, if you enjoyed the process, made some new friends, learned a thing or two, um, felt an emotion, that's a hit. That's a hit in your life. And I think you should look forward to those moments. Targets are fine, but the journey is beautiful. And I just needed to put it down on a piece of paper. So out comes the closet poet. This journey is the bar. Yeah. <laughs> This journey has been beautiful and uh, all said and done, I know that our friends out there who are watching us, they've really enjoyed this session and uh, they so. also, I, I'm sure they have, but uh, I think we should give the opportunity to them to speak the mind and probably ask you something as well, if that's okay with you, Bhavan. Sure, go for it. All right, uh, we have some friends with us and uh, the first guest that we have is uh, Kanika Jaisingh. Kanika, I would request you to unmute your mic and uh, 
go ahead please ask a question thank you so i will start with a comment and then really go on to my question so firstly thank you very much for this session to audi and especially to baman you know in today's age when we all are reading on different platforms and different things like say on social media or written text via newspaper magazine novel many of us have lost touch with something so beautiful as poetry so thank you for getting us back in touch it was actually reminding me that maybe in today's age when all of us are into pop music and the latest music many of us have lost touch with the classical music as well so i must probably get back to poetry and have some beethoven on at the background so it was great and i really liked your poetry as well i can't wait to get back into a cinema hall and probably catch a <laughs> bamani rani movie uh my question really is uh, i was very inspired by what you said about your mom and how you are keeping yourself busy and how uh, how alert your mom is as well especially of her old memories but what is your advice in terms of how do we stay positive because this lockdown is here to it seems to be here for a long time and the way we live is changed i think for a long long time especially for people who are retired so someone like your mom what's your advice how do we remain positive thanks thank you kanika that's so sweetly put um, but i i'll say something you know i i don't know how long this lockdown is going to go on this is a uh, I, I think the first thing I said was we should be grateful, and and I think that this is I think nature's way of telling us to cleanse. We saw we saw uh, the skies turning bluer. We saw the sea turning a little greener and bluer. We saw dolphins come and we saw ostriches come. I don't know what all all kinds of animals landed <laughs> up at our doorstep, you know. Uh, but what is that? What does that tell you? Uh, it tells us that I think nature is telling us to cleanse. part of nature to don't you think it is incumbent upon us to cleanse ourselves in many ways to be more productive to help uh, fellow human beings to discover some aspect of you sharpen your tools because we are out there doing business what are we doing business based on what we're doing business based on a certain craft or a talent uh, i think the time was given to us to sharpen that talent to learn a little more mm. okay having said that i, I am I, when i say i'm grateful there are lots of people who have suffered financially and all around us that is part of given that i'm talking which is sad but for the ones who are lucky and grateful to be sitting in their homes all you've been asked is to sit in your homes and cleanse yourself and share and and learn and and you know the creases that you may have it's it's like this this blazer if there's a crease on this blazer that's the only thing that you would see if it's creased but if i iron it out you know we are ready to face mother nature again as human beings i'm talking about the creases that you have on your soul uh, on your intellect i was telling my class just yesterday anika that my 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 class is called spiral bound and that's one of the lines in the poem a cool draft spiral and it was bound uh i think if we had not had lock the lockdown we would not be sitting here for 220 sessions of screenwriting if it wasn't for the lockdown the lockdown says that if you're going to go out in the world and become better writers first study learn sharpen mm. cleanse improve hope that made sense thank you thank you Kanika. thank you very much kanika i hope that that gave you your answer and uh, she said uh, she actually said a very cool thing that can't wait to get back to the theaters because your poem <laughs> directly ties into that as well your love for cinema and the fact that we are yeah. still a little skeptical about getting back but i think we are all going to get back with a vengeance and we're going to really enjoy those movies hai na baban Why you here? Nobody is listening to me. <laughs> they are. Nobody they are. Right now we have another out here. Yeah, you know, I mean, how we long will. are you going to be watching a movie on on this? You know, seven point one DTS Dolby Dolby. You know what? What are we doing all this for? 
because of the, we, we've got to eventually see it on the big screen. And this is a way the, the world will keep tumbling. The world will keep tumbling and we'll keep going back to the cinema. Then something will come. We'll be pulled out of the cinema and say, now is the time for OTT. Yeah, yeah, sure. It'll all happen. We have a next guest, uh, Baman. His name is Danish Murtaza and uh, he has something to say. Danish, please unmute uh, your mic and uh, go ahead. Good evening, Baman, sir. Good evening, Chai. Hi, Danish. My son's name is Danish, just by the way. Okay, sir. Actually, it was a priceless moment this evening. Thanks to Audi and thanks to Baman, sir, Chang. We got to know a lot of things. Actually, in, in today's life, actually, we miss out a lot of things, those priceless moments, those life lessons. I guess the lockdown really helped us in learning a few things. My question to you is that if you weren't an actor, what would you be up to right now? You know, I think I may have been a teacher teaching screenwriting. I don't know, but I, I would love to be part of, 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 of the of the cinema business in some form or the other, whether I contribute as a teacher or as an actor or a screenwriter or as a director. But otherwise, I really wouldn't have minded being. Honestly, musician, I don't know, uh, Danish, I'm so I've, I've tried so many things. I'm keeping on trying stuff. So if somebody tells me if you weren't an actor, I wasn't an actor till 20 years ago. Before that, I was a photographer. I wasn't a photographer before 10 years before that. I was a shopkeeper. And uh, 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 next year, I'll be a debutant director, if you know what I'm saying, at the age of 61. Right. Uh, so I keep changing my profession. So I'm sorry to keep everybody confused about what I do as a living for a living. <laughs> so, so uh, <laughs> I, I really so so may, maybe after ten years, if you ask me, what, if you weren't a director, what did you be doing? I I'll let you know out because I'm discovering still. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Well, Danish, I hope you, that you answered your that, question. Uh, yes, thank you so much. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, Danish. Thank you. Well, uh, Bowen, uh, I was also going to ask you that question that what does the future hold? But it's great that you have already told us that because uh, you are a man of so many talents. It's actually difficult. Right? It is difficult to say what you will be up to next. Nice. But that that jo chhoda apne wahan pe, jo aise apne kaha ki maybe you'll be a director. I, I, is that next on the cards? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Wow. Of course, next year. Congratulations. Yeah, absolutely. yeah, and I've been working on it for the last eight years. You can't just say, okay, I've been an actor for 18, 17, 18 years in the business. So now I have graduated, I can be a director. It's it's like that, that photography story that I told you. Mm -hmm. I can do any sports, but do you know do, uh, do photography on boxing? No, you've got to get sharpen your, your, the craft. You just can't jump and say, Okay, I'm ready to direct. No, I'm ready to write. No, you first got to learn. So just because I've been around enough and done uh, enough of movies does not mean I know how to write and direct. I've got, I, I learned, I learned from scratch. You, you owe it to yourself. You cannot Those study the arts. Important lessons. Yeah. That is a good advice for everybody out there. Whatever you want to do, you can do it. Baman sir is telling you that you can achieve anything, but please Work hard at it and you will be able to. Thank you so much, Baman, for being here with us on Visionary 2020. And uh, all the very best. I'm very excited about your directorial debut that will happen. And of course, everything else that we'll see you at. Thanks, uh, Chang. It's such a delight to speak to a young man with such a wonderful mind and such lovely words come out of your mouth with truth. That's the thing you look for. Another thing that you look for when you when you do anything it's truth you can do any amount of technique but if there's no truth and you speak with a lot of truth and all i can say is uh i feel proud i feel proud and i hope to keep surprising you you with with something uh every now and then surprise myself characters should surprise themselves and only then will they surprise the audience thank you so much and before you leave i have a message from a common friend of ours uh, Chef Sanjeev Kapoor says, "Aap mera guitar kab wapis kar rahe? 
<laughs> you know, uh, <laughs> you know, the thing was that uh, Chef, uh, I did a show with Sanjeev uh, Kapoor and uh, he wanted me to do a show for to raise some funds and he sent his daughter's guitar. And then uh, mm -hmm. my guitar was in the shop. So finally tell him, I've got my own guitar a long time ago. Here it is. But so the, oh, the, the, oh. I had to send the guitar. I just send me the, tell him to send the address. What is it? He can't just let me have it. What the hell? Uh, <laughs> but he's asked me to sign on it for his daughter. So I just want to call him and say, I don't want to sign on it and spoil, uh, spoil it. So where do I find a little corner? Can I sign it in a little corner and not mutilate it? So I got to have that conversation with him. Yeah, he's such a wonderful guy. Such wonderful people on Visionarium. Uh, all, all people I look up to, every single one. And Chang, you've done, a, I'm sure if today is anything to go by, you must have done such a wonderful job with Brother Virat and, and Shankar and Sanjeev and like today. And you're part of Visionarium in a bigger way than you think. So congratulations to you too, Chang, for making this so beautiful. Beautiful. Thank, thank you, Chang. So much, Brahman. Thank you. And thank you for being part of it. It was a pleasure. Genuinely. Truth. Thank you. Well, an evening with Bhaman Irani is something that you're not going to forget anytime soon. That is also the truth. His views on the written word, on poetry, on so much actually, even beyond what we thought we would talk to him about, is something to stand by. I hope this evening was a pleasant reminder to you about the importance of art and creative expression. So no matter what profession you are in, please do not shy away from the creative expression that you are capable of. Write for yourself, write for people, put it out there, nurture it, display it, and life will be richer. That's all we have for you tonight. For some of you, there is even more to look forward to in the future as the best questions from today will get special giveaways from Audi India. Wish you all many more entertaining evenings and a very healthy life. Take care and see you soon.